Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albino ranks every boss in Cuphead from easiest to hardest. This list will judge each boss by how difficult it is to get a grade A plus on them at regular difficulty, because I'm hardcore but I'm not insane, and plain bosses on expert level can F to the U to the C to the fuck off. Let's get it! Number 1, The Root Pack. The easiest boss in Cuphead, the Root Pack is a collection of dirty crops that have no actual musical inclination, but have killed a few people. You start up against a potato, I think, I'm no vegan, who hurls clumps of dirt followed by rubbery pink parry worms. He's your easiest chance to get three parries, but if you're in a hurry, you can kill him after the second one and face off against the Onion, who despite supposedly having layers, only does one thing, which is cry bitter tears, some of which are pink. This is a boss fight that punishes you for being too good, because you can easily wipe out the onion with the super you built up on the potato before it ever launches a parry tier, and then you're out of luck against the non-parryable mind carrot. This carrot is cake as well, as the suicidal baby carrots it heartlessly hurls at you are slow moving and you can commit infanticide rather easily while you go to town on his head. Eventually you'll blow his mind enough and walk away with that golly a perfect score. Number 2, Goopy Le Grande. You know, for a blob that bounces around, Goopy is surprisingly a blob that bounces around. That's about it. Run under him while you're charging your shots, although roundabout works pretty acceptably in this fight too. After you do enough damage, he'll pause and spawn three parryable question marks. You need to get all of it if you want Dad A+, plus, baby, because he don't do nothing else. He is now a bigger blob that bounces around, and occasionally winds up a fist to punch you with that can be ducked under if you don't want your fine china self getting smashed to pieces. Once you stagger him enough, he will die. Except that doesn't mean the fight's over because you must now desecrate his tombstone that is still trying to crush you. Spread shot's good here, but you can use anything, really. Just dash away when he topples over and you'll murder him again. Number three, Captain Brinybeard. The captain himself doesn't do much, but give you dozens of parry pellets, but as a man of the sea, the denizens are his friends. You must keep constant watch for the barrel overhead that will not only periodically crash down on you, but also distracts your chaser bullets from reaching their intended target, which is why I vastly prefer charge shot here. The captain will summon dogfish to advance on you, a squid to obscure the screen in black ink, I mean African American ink, signature joke from now on, and a shark to try and chomp you from behind. Shootin' and lootin' is very in terms of what it throws at you, but it's all easy to avoid, and the captain's insistence on building your super meter with his pink dick beads means you'll be blasting him away several times. His final phase sees his sentient ship boot the captain off into the ocean and take over itself, revealing a uvula weak point and shooting curving fireballs. If you have a super built up for this phase, you can almost skip it entirely, but if you don't, watch for the ship's special beam cannon to wind up and make sure you're far enough away from the barrel that it won't fall on you while you're ducking underneath the impending blast. Wreck that vessel's gag reflux during my second favorite fight and take the victory. Number 4, Cagney Carnation. Cagney Carnation has the greatest idle animation of all time, to the point where I also do that with my hands now. I can't even think of a meaning to attach to the gesture, but it's ridiculous in a lovely way. I run a combination of roundabout and spread shot here. You're better off not using spread shot on the flower itself, because only half the burst will hit it at any given time, but it's good for clearing the seedling mobs he spawns. When he starts cranking himself off and spurting his seed into the air, look for the pink floater and parry that shit. If you're doing good damage, he probably only has time to do that once before he initiates his final phase, where he overgrows random platforms you're standing on while shooting saw blades. These saw blades are where your final two parries need to come from, so take care that you don't accidentally kill the boss before he shoots enough of them out. It's not in my nature to hold back, which makes this part frustrating, but still an easy boss all the same. Number 5, Baroness Von Bonbon. Bon. The most fun boss to say out loud, Baroness Von Bonbon bon has her underlings do most of the dirty work for her, and they tend to fail miserably at being threatening. We have a runaway jawbreaker capsule machine with no health to speak of, a Pac-Man reject with less health to speak of, a chocolate Belgian waffle that flies around and shoots pieces of itself at you, a man that I haven't decided is made of either cupcakes or ice cream that ass crashes leaving waves of either cupcake frosting or ice cream, and a candy corn that treks vertically and horizontally about the map leaving little candy corns in his wake. You'll randomly run into three of these henchmen each encounter you have, and the hard part is only going to be waiting around for Von Bonbon bon to send a little pink bean so 
soldier out of her castle to get parried on. You really have to dial back the damage you do during the second and third minions because not all the bean soldiers are pink and they don't come out very often. Once you wreck them all, the champion of eating her feelings will come deal with you herself by riding her castle and throwing her head at you. The heads track your location and move a little at a time, so maneuver around them carefully. You can parry the rolling mince sheet barrels at you, but they don't count towards the total. Also, just in general, keep in mind that if you want 6 out of 6 super rank on a boss, you can't just use EX attacks willy-nilly. It has to hit an enemy. Number 6, Phantom Express. Choo-choo, motherfuckers. I thought the Phantom Express was relatively difficult until I discovered Charge Shot and Roundabout. Jump up and down backwards during the first phase with Roundabout to hit virtually every eyeball and do great damage, pausing only to smack those pink jack-o'-lantern soaps out of the sky. This game has introduced so many new phrases into my vocabulary history. The ghoul will go down, and you switch to Charge Shot for the rest of the encounter. Even if your cart is in the wrong spot, you can still dodge the skull hand if you stand in the right spot, so just keep aiming blasts at the head and that part's easy. It'll now be replaced with two cookie heads. Move your cart to the left if it ain't there already and go to town on the left head and it'll be dead by the time the right head finishes its lightning breath. Parry the pink skulls if you need to and it's too bad you don't have any jack-o'-lantern soap for the rinse and repeating you'll do for the right head. Now the final phase, which can seem drawn out and frantic if you're using a garbage weapon, but you've got charge shot and it takes literally four of those to kill the heart. Long as you're not missing, you won't even have time to get hit. Number 7, Jimmy the Great. Jimmy's got a ton of weird-ass phases to his boss fight. He'll start off by either throwing Egyptian kittens, scimitars, or precious family heirlooms at you with random parry opportunities interspersed. If it's the heirlooms, you can get all three parries right off the bat, otherwise you'll have to wait patiently. He'll then turn into a gauntlet of spinning blades, where I'd recommend you switch to the bomb alternate weapon and blow up his face segments and fly through them. But don't be in too much of a hurry, because if you're too close to the right side of the screen, you might get sliced by a slicer you couldn't see slicing. Once you finished rustling his jimmies, a joke that is better written than spoken, he will naturally become a giant tongue thing in a sarcophagus and shoot planetoid ornaments at you amidst some charging zombie ghosts. This is all standard fare. If you're still looking for your next parry opportunity, look no further than the next phase where he replaces himself with a commando Pinocchio that fires energy bullets from his fingertips that are occasionally pink. This one has strings and they are definitely holding him down. All the while, Jimmy's hat is overstaying its welcome by a huge margin, slowly meandering towards you like a stranger in It Follows. Easy to get away from, but there's a sense of dread knowing it's always out there, inching its way closer and closer until you find some poor soul to have sex with, and then you have to tell them about it and teach them you can't just run off because if they die, it's just coming after you again, which is the biggest bummer of all time, knowing that even if you pass the curse along a hundredfold, you never know in a few years when all of your subsequent sexual stand-ins could have died and left you unwittingly vulnerable once again. Anyway, Jimmy's last phase has him be giant with triple pyramids who shoot one at a time in a quad beam fashion. If you find yourself unable to get out of the way of an incoming laser, I don't know if this is smoke dash or an inherent plane ability, but you can mini dodge perpendicularly through a beam if you time it properly and clench your butthole real hard in the process. I typed way too much for this one. Number eight, Grim Matchstick. If you have the lob shot, you're golden for this fight. You only want to do a little damage to start while Matchstick is shooting his parry holes at you, so we'll keep doing them until you get three, because you'll have no further chances in any of the other phases. Once you do, you can dodge his fiery spaghetti balls while focusing your own fire on him. You'll build your super meter to max right when he's about to back out of frame, so unleash it on him before he can, and his next phase will last about five seconds. A great tip to dodge the little flaming boys is not to do anything until they actually jump as they're good at tracking people who react instinctively. Then Matchstick will become trilingual and start shooting blaze capsules at you that explode in a four-way pattern if one of your shots connects with them, so don't be letting your shots connect with them. Watch out for when one of the heads turns into a fire hose and stay off the middle clouds, but never stop doing your own damage. Weirdly, the expert version of this boss is even easier, as the clouds reverse direction, so you're always facing the dragon when you're jumping and shooting. I guess Matchstick is hard if you're, like, bad at jumping or dodging or shooting, or cuphead. Ha <laughs> ha! Number nine, Hilda Berg. Like the disaster she was named after, Hilda Berg is someone I would also like to see on fire crashing into shit. Calling a woman a blimp is typically considered rude, but in this case it's quite spot on. Hilda sends out little blimps that sometimes shoot parryable shots while she tries to laugh you to death and shapeshift into random cloud entities. It's nothing we haven't seen before in video games. As with all plain bosses, abuse your maximum super to hell and parry as often as you can even after you reach your quota. If she turns into a cloudy and ox, get ready to dodge quick ramming attacks 
contacts with very little warning. Just try not to be at the same elevation as her most of the time. If she becomes too twin cloudy in Gemini L's, really piling on the Yu-Gi-Oh references with this one, she'll launch an auto-firing turret swirl that you should preemptively dodge in case you get unlucky, and it starts firing in your direction first. And if she becomes a cloudy and man cupid, avoid the arrows and blow up the stars as a group with your bomb fire. After way too long of a period has passed, she'll do an impression of an epileptic Asian boy who just watched the Porygon episode of Pokemon and start convulsing violently, before turning into a crescent moon and launching stars and UFOs at you. This part is the hardest to dodge, as the UFOs have set times they activate their infinite range tractor beams, so you need to know when to hang back and when to rush forward to avoid them, all while still racking up damage on Lunar Bitch Hilda. That better be a waxing crescent, I don't want to get rug burn later. Number 10, Werner Vermin. I've never said that name out loud, and I just got the pun. Them W's was throwing me off. Mr. Vermin is a German mouse in a tin can battle tank that fires many bombs and small pieces of occasionally parryable garbage, although you may not even see that attack, which will force you to accrue all three parries on the final phase. I'm a fan of the lobber weapon on this fight, as it can rack up enough damage during certain sections to skip otherwise deadly attacks. After Vermin reveals himself, there will be an upper and lower plane for you to stand on, and you should never be on the same one he is unless you want to get Charmander to death. Bottle caps on poles will continuously spin into the playing field and give you small but meaningful gashes, so maneuver around and switch sides as necessary. You may have noticed some big eyes watching you as you duke it out with this rodent, and after you blow up his tank, Vermin is eaten by a giant cat. And by giant, I mean normal-sized, but we're small, and that's a lesson in perspective, boys and girls. This is where you switch to spread shot and just pummel that kitty's face. His claws will come at you from one side or the other, but avoid the falling debris, it's just an open window to attack him. He'll spawn mice ghosts that throw energy balls towards you, and when they hit the ground, they split and shoot horizontally, so be mindful. Some of them are pink, and that's where you'll get your missing parries. Once you kill him, it is revealed that Vermin was controlling the robotic cat the whole time. What a genius! Though that also means the mice ghosts are real dead mice, who were probably enemies of Werner, and I think you've just done a good thing for the world of Cuphead by ending him. Number 11, Beppy the Clown. Straight from the land of Stephen King, Beppy is here to run you over with his tentative bumper car. You'll have to shoot the ducks overhead to give yourself room to jump over his acceleration, and you might even see a pink one to parry, although this boss has no shortage of parryable options in the future. Once he runs himself off the road, Beppy will turn into an air pump and spawn endless balloon animals, many of which are parryable, and I'd recommend getting your parry quota before you end this phase. From this point on, a roller coaster will be traveling across the screen with passengers in it that are just excited to be there, and you can't land on any of them or they'll sue the park. Mark. Suck the air out of the pump and Beppy will start riding a donkey that pops down and shoots horseshoes. Standing under the ass with Spreadshot will absolutely wreck, and Spreadshot in general is your key to this battle. The final phase kills many people, I'm told. Beppy takes possession of a park ride and the roller coaster is sped up to triple speed. Standing on the platforms that fly around and unloading on Beppy will net you your win, but not before he pukes out some baseball-throwing penguins whose shots you have to dodge. You can kill them, but I wouldn't bother. You'll build up so much super during this phase, you're basically guaranteed to max it out and you can finish the fight decisively. Number 12, Ribby and Croaks. This fight is only this high because of the very beginning when you're trying to hit your parry quota. When whichever frog is which is hurling fireballs at you, the pink ones come out at different intervals every encounter. It's pretty hard to get three in one go without getting hit and having to start over, because don't forget, you have to flawless all the bosses for that sweet A-plus rank. I like roundabout for this fight, especially when they're on both sides of you, so it's impossible for a shot to miss. You can easily dodge everything the frogs do, whether it's windmilling while shooting Saturn balls or spitting out flame flies that have never once hit anyone. It's it's when both frogs put Potaro earrings on and fuse together into a slot machine that things get a little more trying, he said, without batting an eye. Parrying the slot handle doesn't count towards your goal, but it does unleash one of their attacks on you and renders them vincible, as opposed to the antonym of invincible. You can either play hopscotch on green platforms, leap over or duck under blue laser beams, or jump under tiger balls, but unless you have a lazy eye or cataracts, you should be fine. Or better yet, double fine. Why? They're not even related to this. Number 13, Sally Stage Play. This fight allows me to live vicariously through Cuphead and do what I'd like to do to most thespians. Spread Shot is your friend once again, as despite appearances, you can safely stand half an inch from Sally at pretty much all times and point blank her to death as she jumps up and dives past you like a moron. Sally is a real bummer to wait for parries on. She rarely fires the heart that does it here. The second phase is the same as the first in terms of strategy, only with child labor babies paid in milk bottles throwing their compensation at you, which I have to believe is some kind of SAG-AFTRA union 
violation. Get through this and she'll become a much bigger target, where unlike Harvey Weinstein, you can point your finger at this starlet's ass relatively consequence-free. My favorite moment is when the stagehand grunts across the field carrying the heavy set piece and you have to either parry the pink star over him or smoke dash through him. I have a high school theater background. It was a nice touch. The last phase has you dodging slash parrying roses falling from the sky and vaulting over a parasol that must be in a dream. Hashtag Inception. I wouldn't try and finance any of Sally's plays after this. She just donated the money to charity. Number 14, Wally Warbles. Wally is under house arrest, apparently, and only his head is vulnerable to attack. When he's not shooting Yoshi's multicolored children at you, he's sending out little birds rank and file, where the last one in the line is always easily parryable. In fact, Wally has some of the most parry opportunities in the game, if you don't count King Dice. He also does a thing where his head turns into a hand that fires a triple shot of bullets. If my head could turn into three fingers whenever I wanted it to, maybe I wouldn't be alone. After you make him mad, he'll start molting his feathers and spraying them every which way, but as with all bullet hell sections of any game, 95% of the clutter on the screen is irrelevant. Focus on what's immediately around you and keep that fire button held down. Once he runs out of feathers, he'll Benjamin Button his way back to a chick and surround himself with eggs, so now's the perfect time to get him pregnant. He'll periodically shoot a little laser bullet you can parry while you're weaving in and out of his ring of hatching death. Get past this to stretch him out bare on a gurney while his head becomes a trash can and hurls, you guessed it, trash at you. If my head could turn into a garbage can whenever I wanted it to, maybe I wouldn't be alone. Oh, it doesn't work twice? His little, <laughs> his little birdie paramedics are the most likely to hit you, especially the one nearest you. Never be directly above it, but their moral dispositions as medical staff do a quick 180 when they start salting the chicken after you kill it. Fucking cannibals. Number 15, King Dice. The Dice Man is more of an experience than a fight, since there's at minimum three mini-bosses before you can tackle the big bitch himself. Rolling dice moves you along the roulette board, and while the HP upgrades are in different places each try, the mini-bosses are always located in the same slots, and HP ups don't matter when you're trying to get an A-plus rank anyway, because even if you end the boss with three HP left, it still just counts the hits you take. If you want the easiest mini-bosses to get there, I'd recommend first rolling a two so you can beat up the poker chip boss with charge shot, unlike what I did in this video for some reason. Then roll a three so you can beat up the swinging domino boss with charge shot. Then land in the middle of the third section so you can beat up the magic eight ball boss with spread shot. And then slow your roll for a second. <laughs> Get it? Dice? Fuck? Watch out here because as soon as you hit the dice to land on the end tile, this sucker punching biatch will immediately put his hand down to the left middle of the screen. So if you thought you were gonna back up and admire your parrying handiwork, oopsie, there goes your perfect run. Happened to me twice. You like juggle parrying, right? Cause you need to at least five times in a row on multiple occasions in order to survive the walking cards with occasional dashes in midair to hit faraway pink ones. It gets the blood pumping, right? To my dick. That's all he does though, from one side or another. Despite the length of time it takes to restart if you mess up, it's not as aggravating as some fights coming up. Number 16, Dr. Kyle's Robot. This boss reminds me of the engine fights from fellow Souls game Crash Bandicoot. <sighs> Please. Nowadays, any game that can't be beaten in one life by unborn children with cerebral palsy is like Dark Souls. Anyway, it's real difficult not to get hit by Dr. Kyle's Robot. Some might say it's even harder than the Cuphead tutorial, but I don't know, the scales are pretty balanced there. You have to keep the midsection alive until you land three parries, so I first take out the bottom ship line Launcher, and then move up to the laser antenna while incredibly skillfully and sometimes flounderingly dodging all the shit that's on the screen. Once his heart is exposed, I just ram a supercharged bomb in there after a couple seconds of shooting to take him to the next phase of shooting his head off and flying around the screen. You'll need your alt fire to kill these black blimps, I mean African American blimps, callback, at a safe distance, and to help you make like a man who is terrified of blowjobs and avoid head at all costs. Soon the man behind the machine pops out and laughs maniacally as mad scientists tend to do, before non-stop shooting screen-filling projectiles for the rest of the encounter. In my view, this is actually the easiest part of the boss. It'll get you tense. But as with Wally Warbles, you just have to focus on what's near you and not really ever look at Dr. Call himself, since as long as you're holding down the fire button, you're probably hitting him as you maneuver around. Once you knock all his clothes off, you're good to go. Number 17, Kala Maria. 
Hey, it's my favorite boss in Cuphead for reasons that are not frowned upon. Calamari's goal is to get back at people for polluting the ocean by polluting the screen with a dizzying amount of projectiles and clutter. When she calls to her turtle buddy, I like to switch to bombs and blow that sucker out of the water as fast as possible. Because if she's going to spit specters out while that's going on, you're probably going to get ghosted. When she starts lifting schools of domestic fish out of the ocean, that's your only chance to parry. And there are exactly three pink ones littered in there, so you better get them all. The problems with this fight start when electric eels start groping Calla Maria like a famous Hollywood producer. Because she then evolves the ability to turn you to stone with a flash of light that I'm not sure is dodgeable. Whether you are or aren't then bombarded with eel pellets is a matter of luck, and wasting time killing the eels instead of focusing fire on the boss isn't guaranteed to help. Just make sure you have a max super for that phase to get it over with. Eventually her body will turn to stone and separate from her head but will unfortunately crumble and sink into the ocean before you can salvage it for yourself. At this point, I ran into a glitch, where I think if you smoke dash at exactly the right time during a stone flash, you maybe become ethereal, but then just watch the footage and tell me what happened. Because I flew right through the floor and a spike wall without getting hit, and a resulting max super bomb wouldn't even explode on contact with the boss until it detonated on its own. My justification here is that luck so often screws you over during this battle that if it decides to turn the tables on the boss, who am I to discount it? For the record, I had a plus calamari before, as you can see from the report card. Number 18, Rumor Honeybottoms. Honeybottoms sounds like something Harvey Weinstein would nickname a woman he's about to get casted in a movie, and rumor is what those situations were classified as for 30 years. A. Hey, this bumblebeeotch is the CEO of a company whose workers are not very thrilled about being there and welcome death. The watchman you start out against moves and throws bombs in a specific pattern each time, so it's important to trial and error until you learn where to stand to parry the right projectile each time while you're unloading on them. You should try and get three from the first phase because once Honeybottoms pops out of the HR department, she might not do a pyramid attack that nets you more parries before her final phase kicks in. Always stay out of the middle when you don't know where she's coming down from because she drops from there with the least amount of warning and will probably clip you as she starts spitting out bullet bills that are pretty frantic to dodge. Careful when jumping above one, you don't accidentally hit one above you. Her easiest attack is when she spawns a couple pink spheres that can be parried, but purely as a dodging maneuver since they don't count towards her total. You'll know she's about to transform into an aircraft when she pops out of the middle and begins to read a book, which is completely far-fetched to me because we all know women didn't read in the 1930s. I hope you have your super charged up and are prepared to use it immediately, because then it'll only take a few high-risk charge shots to end her. Number 19, The Devil. The hardest boss in Cuphead is the devil. I was all set to make Rumor my hardest boss until it actually came time to try an A-plus Lucifer himself, which took a strong half an hour because he's a giant dick. Between his desolately spaced out parry opportunities to his occasionally unavoidable damage, the devil is a motherfucking liar. I'm embarrassed, but I actually didn't know you could duck under his arm clap attack until like 15 minutes in. I thought you had to time your jump and dash perfectly, which sucked because he'd sometimes slow his arms down just to fuck with you. His his parryable spells are the attacks that have the strongest chance of hitting you, whether it's the fireball wheel taking half a second to spawn a fireball directly where you're standing to shoot him, or the swirly ones that scatter the flames in hard to avoid places as they come after you and you're still getting happily chased by these stupid imps all day. Once you defeat his first phase, he'll unzip his skin and jump out as a skeleton, something Harvey Weinstein has wet dreams about because he fat. Alright, that's the last one. You must follow him down the rabbit hole and then shoot his giant eyeballs that hurl axes at, axes at you while blue flaming poker chips fall onto random platforms the rest of the fight. If he squeezes out a pink bomb bat from one of his ears, you better parry that. Not only for the quota, but because if you don't, it will explode half the screen and you will have to start over. Beyond that, his next phase introduces these flying monkey things whose skulls they shoot are sometimes pink and where you'll get your third parry from likely, but you have to dodge a lot of shit here. Spreadshot helps keep the blue spinny divey things from hitting you, and you can kill the monkeys too. Then comes the final phase of the fight that I call the middle finger phase, because it's just the devil crying and you're like, oh, free win, until you let your guard down and a poker chip drops on the only platform left on the screen, the one you're standing on, and before you can get out of the way, you're at two HP and now you're crying. But otherwise, you'll kill the devil and get an A plus and feel good about it, and now you just have 
have to go get S ranks on every boss on Expert. Woo! Anyway, that's going to do it for this boss ranking. I hope you enjoyed it. I have more boss rankings for Souls games, Neo, and Kingdom Hearts you can check out, as well as waifu rankings for things like Persona 5 and Danganronpa. So like, share, and subscribe for all that great wholesome goodness, and I'll see you guys next time.